before some silly man prayer, all I could think about was all of that coldness that was around me, but yet still the Lord allowed me to sit in the comfort of my home. Yes. Not feeling the elements that were all around me. And we pray for those that are that are not as blessed as we are. We, we pray that they have they found comfort in last night. But I'm grateful that the Lord didn't allow me and my family to wake up to no heat and be exposed to the elements. Then we got the power of the universities, interstate systems to get to Game Street, 1601 South Games. Bless God, when we got here, the praise team decided to open up with a little change for me to remind us that God is. And that's an amazing song because it, it never, there's nothing after what God is. It's just God is. Yeah. And, and it's so amazing how it is that somebody was reflecting and saying, God is my keeper. Yes. Yeah. While yet still someone else was reflecting and saying, God is my healer. Yes. And yet still I like, could feel in my spirit that someone in the sanctuary was saying that God is my sustainer. Yes. But to me, I was sitting over there and all I could think of is God is my all. And all. Oh.
We've got a few housekeeping things before we get into this text. I've been chewing on this text for a little while. And you know, Sister Shepherd, sometimes you can't take it off the oven until it's just right. So it's been on a low simmer this morning. But I think it's just about right. On this morning, we want to keep Brother Jose Levy in our prayers. He lost his brother. And Sister Sandra Young, also in our prayers at the loss of her brother. A homegoing celebration for her brother will be Saturday at 11 at Robinson here in Little Rock. I would like to take this opportunity to thank my senior pastor chance to stand before his congregation. I ask that y'all continue to lift him up in prayer, wherever he may be, and then we continue to pray for the Dane Street family and the kingdom as a whole. I realize that there are some that think that the church is dying in this pandemic, but I will refute that with you and say that the only way that the church could die is if you let it die in your heart. have a bigger problem to work with on you than just curing this pandemic. Pastor Minnix, we pray your strength and we pray your keeping at this time. If you have your Bibles, if you have your Bibles, turn to 1 Corinthians, Paul's first letter to the church at Corinth. Turn over to chapter 13. I'm going to read verses 9 through 11, but 11 is our key verse. We'll dabble, talk about a little bit of it, and then we'll let you go home before the weather gets too bad. 1 Corinthians 13, beginning at verse 9. I'm going to read this in the New Living Translation because I just like, I like the way that verse 11 reads. And it says, now our knowledge is partial and incomplete. And even the gift of prophecy reveals only part of the whole picture. But when the time of perfection comes, these partial things will become useless. Verse 11, our key verse for today. When I was a child, I spoke as a child. I and thought and reasoned as a child. But when I grew up, I put away childish things. Just for emphasis, I want to read verse 11 one more time. When I was a child, I spoke and thought and reasoned as a child. But when I grew up, I put away childish things. Just for a moment, I would like to tag this text a grown and mature love. All right. A grown and mature love. It is not lost on me that this message is being delivered on Valentine's Day. I've been scrolling Facebook all week and I've been seeing the Valentine's Day challenge couples on how you met, how long you've been together, who said I love you first, things of that nature. I'm sure that you've seen this out there on social media. And there's a question in that challenge that, that asks you, Mr. Mitchell, how long have you been together? And me and my, for you all that don't know me, I'm uber picky. I wouldn't call myself just petty. I'm, I'm a special kind of petty. I, I take pride in my pettiness. Tell the truth. And I was reading some of the Valentine's challenges, and when I got to the question on how long you've been together, they were saying we've been together six weeks, two months. 
And all I could think about was, y'all have been together long enough just to know each other's names. That's it, that's it. You don't even know that. Because uh, the love that you're professing mm. is an immature love. Yeah. See, it, it, it hadn't had an opportunity to grow through much. There's not much in the relationship department that you can learn about somebody in six weeks, Sister King. It's, it's just <laughs> not possible now. I know that they have a television show called Love at First Sight. I'm not going to argue that this is not your soulmate. Mary at First Sight. I'm so thankful, Sister. I'm not going to argue that this is your true love. <laughs> But I am here to tell you that after 21 years of marriage, All right. I'm here to tell you that it, at six weeks into my relationship with my wife, she had no clue as to the hair that she was and, I, and I'm just going to tell you, she had no clue as to what she was signing up for. Six weeks in, I could be on my best behavior for six weeks. <laughs> I can buy you a mystic baby and a baby roof for six weeks. Oh, that's, that's how I got it, Shanita. Every time I came around, I had a strawberry kiwi mystic. Yeah. Some of you folk don't know what mystics are. But for those of us that are agree in the hell. I had a mystic and a baby roof. That's what I, I greeted her with every time I came to see her. Uh -huh. Now it's hard for me to even bring a dinner home. <laughs> But six weeks, I can, I can fool you for six weeks. I can treat you any kind of way for six weeks. That's an immature love. That's an infatuation, I would say. But in the text today, the author is saying in verse 11, Brother Sullivan, the first thing out of his mouth, for you educators, he started it with a dependent clause. Yeah. Says when I was a child. child yeah. Uh, huh? All right. Which let me know that that portion of that sentence needed something else to support it. Yeah. So I had to read on the full understanding of what he was reflecting on when he said, "When I was a child." Uh, when I was a child, he says that I spoke as a child. Yeah. Y'all. Mm -hmm. I. Thought as a child, yeah. reason as a child, and Sister Christopher. When I was meditating on this over the weeks, I my mind took me back to when I was a child and the things that I thought as a child. Yeah. And I venture back, and I'm here to tell you that I had different thoughts on different subjects back then. I I, I thought about money differently yeah. when I was a child. I literally thought that mama and daddy could simply reach down into that wallet or that purse and it magically made money. But now that I'm a man, I understand that if you don't go to work, <laughs> put in your hours on the job, that money will not miraculously appear in your bank account. When I was a child, I would walk into the store with my mother. And I had no compunction with about asking for something unreasonable. Mama, can I have? Yes. And when she would say, no, not today, or no period, I didn't understand that everything that I was asking for had a dollar amount attached to it. Right. But now that I'm a man, 